The Hanbali school Arabic, Almdli is one of the four traditional Sunni Islamic schools of jurisprudence fiqh. It is named after the Iraqi scholar Ahmad ibn Hanbal d. 855, and was institutionalized by his students. The Hanbali Madhab is the smallest of four major Sunni schools, the others being the Hanafi, Maliki, and Shafi. I. Hanbali school derives Sharia predominantly from the Quran, the Hadiths, sayings and customs of Muhammad, and the views of Sahaba, Muhammad's companions. In cases where there is no clear answer in sacred texts of Islam, the Hanbali school does not accept jurist discretion or customs of a community as a sound basis to derive Islamic law, a method that Hanafi and Maliki Sunni fiqhs accept. Hanbali school is the strict traditionalist school of jurisprudence in Sunni Islam. It is found primarily in Saudi Arabia and Qatar, where it is the official fiqh. Hanbali followers are the demographic majority in four emirates of UAE Sharjah, Umm al Qawain, Ras al Khaimah, and Ajman. Large minorities of Hanbali followers are also found in Bahrain, Oman, and Yemen, and among Iraqi and Jordanian Bedouins. The Hanbali school experienced a reformation in the Wahhabi Salafist movement. Historically, the school was small. During the 18th to early 20th century, Muhammad ibn Abd al Wahhab and al Sa'd greatly aided its propagation around the world by way of their interpretation of the school's teachings. As a result of this, the school's name has become a controversial one in certain quarters of the Islamic world due to the influence he is believed by some to have had upon these teachings, which cites Ibn Hanbal as a principal influence along with the 13th century Hanbali reformer Ibn Taymiyyah. However, it has been argued by certain scholars that Ibn Hanbal's own beliefs actually played no real part in the establishment of the central doctrines of Wahhabism. As there is evidence, according to the same authors, that the older Hanbalite authorities had doctrinal concerns very different from those of the Wahhabis. As medieval Hanbali literature is rich in references to saints, grave visitation, miracles, and relics. Historically, the Hanbali school was treated as simply another valid interpretation of Islamic law, and many prominent medieval Sufis, such as Abdul Qadir Gilani, were Hanbali jurists and mystics at the same time. History Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the founder of Hanbali school, was a disciple of al-Shafi'i. Like Shafi'i and al-Zahiri, he was deeply concerned with the extreme elasticity being deployed by many jurists of his time, who used their discretion to reinterpret the doctrines of Quran and Hadiths to suit the demands of caliphs and wealthy. Ibn Hanbal advocated return to literal interpretation of Quran and Hadiths. Influenced by the debates of his time, he was known for rejecting religious rulings from the consensus of jurists of his time, which he considered to be speculative theology he associated them with the Mutazilis, whom he despised. Ibn Hanbal was also hostile to the discretionary principles of rulings in jurisprudence USUL al mainly championed by the people of opinion, which was established by Abu Hanifa, although he did adopt al-Shafi'i's method in USUL al -Fiqh. He linked these discretionary principles with Kalam. His guiding principle was that the Quran and Sunnah are the only proper sources of Islamic jurisprudence, and are of equal authority and should be interpreted literally in line with the Athari creed. He also believed that there can be no true consensus among jurists of his time, and preferred the consensus of Muhammad's companions Sahaba and weaker hadiths. Imam Hanbal himself compiled Al Musnad, a text with over 30,000 saying, actions and customs of Muhammad. Ibn Hanbal never composed an actual systematic legal theory on his own, though his followers established a systemic method after his death. Much of the work of preserving the school based on Ibn Hanbal's method was laid by his student Abu Bakr al Khalil. His documentation on the founder's views eventually reached 20 volumes. The original copy of the work, which was contained in the House of Wisdom, was burned along with many other works of literature during the Mongol siege of Baghdad. The book was only preserved in a summarized form by the Hanbali jurist Al Karaki, who had access to written copies of Al Khalil's book before the siege. Relations with the Abbasid Caliphate were rocky for the Hanbalites. Led by the Hanbalite scholar Al Hasan ibn Ali al Barbahari, the school often formed mobs of followers in 10th century Baghdad who would engage in violence against fellow Sunnis suspected of committing sins and all Shiites. During al Barbahari's leadership of the school in Baghdad, shops were looted, female entertainers were attacked in the streets, popular grievances among the lower classes were agitated as a source of mobilization, and public chaos in general ensued. 
Their efforts would be their own undoing in 935, when a series of home invasions and mob violence on the part of al Barbahara's followers in addition to perceived deviant views led to the Caliph Radi publicly condemning the school in its entirety and ending its official patronage by state religious bodies. Principles <inaudible> 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 Topic. Sources of law Like all other schools of Sunni Islam, the Hanbali school holds that the two primary sources of Islamic law are the Quran and the Sunnah found in Hadiths compilation of sayings, actions and customs of Muhammad. Where these texts did not provide guidance, Imam Hanbal recommended guidance from established consensus of Muhammad's companions sahaba, then individual opinion of Muhammad's companions, followed in order of preference by weaker hadiths, and in rare cases qayas analogy. The Hanbali school, unlike Hanafi and Maliki schools, rejected that a source of Islamic law can be a jurist's personal discretionary opinion or consensus of later generation Muslims on matters that serve the interest of Islam and community. Hanbalis hold that this is impossible and leads to abuse. Ibn Hanbal rejected the possibility of religiously binding consensus (IJMA) as it was impossible to verify once later generations of Muslims spread throughout the world, going as far as declaring anyone who claimed as such to be a liar. Ibn Hanbal did, however, accept the possibility and validity of the consensus of the Sahaba, the first generation of Muslims. Later followers of the school, however, expanded on the types of consensus accepted as valid, and the prominent Hanbalite Ibn Taymiyyah expanded legal consensus to later generations while at the same time restricting it only to the religiously learned. Analogical reasoning was likewise rejected as a valid source of law by Ibn Hanbal himself, with a near-unanimous majority of later Hanbalite jurists not only accepting analogical reasoning as valid but also borrowing from the works of Shafi'ite jurists on the subject. Ibn Hanbal's strict standards of acceptance regarding the sources of Islamic law were probably due to his suspicion regarding the field of USUL al-Fiqh, which he equated with speculative theology In the modern era, Hanbalites have branched out and even delved into matters regarding the upholding of public interest and even juristic preference anathema to the earlier Hanbalites as valid methods of determining religious law. Theology Ibn Hanbal taught that the Quran is uncreated due to Muslim belief that it is the Word of God, and the Word of God is not created. The Mutazilites taught that the Quran, which is readable and touchable, is created like other creatures and created objects. Ibn Hanbal viewed this as heresy, replying that there are things which are not touchable but are created, such as the throne of God. Unlike the other three schools of Islamic jurisprudence Hanafi, Maliki, and Shafi, the Hanbali madhab remained largely traditionalist or Athari in theology and it was primarily Hanbali scholars who codified the Athari school of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Distinct rulings Wudu, one of the seven things which nullifies the minor purification includes, touching a woman for the purpose of carnal desire. This ruling is similar to the Maliki opinion, however the Shafi'i opinion is that merely touching a woman will break the wudu, while the Hanafi opinion is that merely touching a woman does not break the wudu. Al-Qayyam, one position of the school according to Kash Shav al-Kina of al-Bahuti, and al-Mughni of Ibn Qudama is the same as that of Imam Abu Hanifa and his students, to place one's hands below the navel. Another position is that hands are positioned above the navel or on the chest while standing in prayer, not similar to the Hanafis, though others state a person has a choice i.e. either above the navel or near the chest. Ruku, the hands are to be raised before going to Ruku, and standing up from Ruku, similar to the Shafi'i school. While standing up after Ruku, a person has a choice to place their hands back to the position as they were before. Other Madahab state the hands should be left on their sides. Tashahad, the finger should be pointed and not moved, upon mentioning the name of Allah. Taslim, is considered obligatory by the Madahab. Salat ul-Witr, Hanbalis pray two rakats consecutively then perform Taslim, and then one rakar is performed separately. Jua Kanut is recited after the Ruku during winter, and hands are raised during the Jua. In the absence of a valid excuse, it is obligatory at least for adult men to pray in congregation rather than individually. 
The majority of the Hanbali school considers admission in a court of law to be indivisible, that is, a plaintiff may not accept some parts of a defendant's testimony while rejecting other parts. This position is also held by the Zahiri school, though it is opposed by the Hanafi and Maliki schools. Reception The Hanbali school is now accepted as the fourth of the mainstream Sunni schools of law. It has traditionally enjoyed a smaller following than the other schools. In the earlier period, Sunni jurisprudence was based on four other schools, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi and Zahiri. Later on, the Hanbali school supplanted the Zahiri school's spot as the fourth mainstream school. Hanbalism essentially formed as a traditionalist reaction to what they viewed as speculative innovations on the part of the earlier established schools. Historically, the school's legitimacy was not always accepted. Muslim exegete Muhammad ibn Jarrah al Tabari, founder of the now extinct Jariri school of law, was noted for ignoring the Hanbali school entirely when weighing the views of jurists. This was due to his view that the founder, ibn Hanbal, was merely a scholar of prophetic tradition and was not a jurist at all. The Hanbalites, led by al Babahari, reacted by stoning Tabari's home several times, inciting riots so violent that Abbasid authorities had to subdue them by force. Upon Tabari's death, the Hanbalites formed a violent mob large enough that Abbasid officials buried him in secret for fear of further riots where Tabari buried publicly in a Muslim graveyard. Similarly, the Andalusian theologian Ibn Abd al-Bah made a point to exclude Ibn Hanbal's views from the books on Sunni Muslim jurisprudence. In al muqaddimah Ibn Khaldun, himself a Qadi in Egypt during the Mamluk era, also noted that the following of this school was rare and stated that this is due to the fact that they largely reject Itihad as a whole. Eventually, the Mamluk Sultanate and later the Ottoman Empire codified Sunni Islam as four schools, including the Hanbalite school at the expense of the Zahirites. The Hanafis, Shafi'i and Malikis agreed on important matters and recognized each other's systems as equally valid. This was not the case with the Hanbalites, who were recognized as legitimate by the older three schools but refused to return the favor. Topic. Differences with other Sunni schools In comparison to the Hanafis and the Malikis, in the absence of a consensus, the opinion of a Sahabi is given priority over Qayas which early Hanbalis rejected or Al-Urf, which is completely rejected by Hanbalis. Where Hanbalis require a unanimous consensus, Hanafis tend to follow the consensus of Kufa and Malikis that of al Medina. Zahiris, a less mainstream school, is sometimes seen as the closest to Hanbalis and Hanafis. However the similarities are only true for early Zahiris who followed the Athari creed. The branch that was largely instigated by Ibn Hazm which developed in Al-Andalus, al karawayan and later became the official school of the state under the Almohads, differed significantly from Hanbalism. It did not follow the Athari and Taklid schools and opted for logical istidlal. Deductive demonstration as a way to interpret scripture that wasn't clear literally. Hanbalis rejected Kalam as a whole and believed in the supremacy of the text over the mind and did not engage in dialectic debates with the Mutazila. Ibn Hazm, on the other hand, engaged in these debates and believed in logical reasoning rejecting most of Mutazila claims as sophists and absurd. Ibn Hazm, also scrutinized Hadith more severely. He adopted an attitude where he'd reject hadiths if he discovered something suspicious about the lives of those who reported it, or in the case where a person in the Sanad is not a widely known figure. In doing so, he was aided by his vast historical knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Relationship with Sufism Sufism, often described as the inner mystical dimension of Islam, is not a separate school or sect of the religion, but, rather, is considered by its adherents to be an inward way of approaching Islam which complements the regular outward practice of the five pillars. Sufism became immensely popular during the medieval period in practically all parts of the Sunni world and continues to remain so in many parts of the world today. As Christopher Melchett has pointed out, both Hanbalism and classical Sufism took concrete shapes in the 9th and early 10th centuries CE, with both soon becoming essential components of the high medieval Sunni synthesis. 
Although many Hanbali scholars today, identifying themselves with the Salafi and Wahhabi contemporary movements within Hanbalism, shun Sufi practices such as the veneration of saints at their tombs, which they deem heretical innovations in the religion, it is important to recognize that the Hanbali school of Sunni law has, in fact, had a very intimate relationship with Sufism throughout history, with such controversies only manifesting themselves after the 18th century, once the movement of Wahhabism became the primary form of Islam practiced in Saudi Arabia. There is evidence that many medieval Hanbali scholars were very close to the Sufi Mata and St. Halij, whose mystical piety seems to have influenced many regular jurists in the school. Many later Hanbalis, meanwhile, were often Sufis themselves, including figures not normally associated with Sufism, such as Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyim al Jortiya. Both these men, sometimes considered to be completely anti-Sufi in their leanings, were actually initiated into the Qadiriya order of the celebrated mystic and Saint Abdul Qadir Gilani, who was himself a renowned Hanbali jurist. As the Qadiriya order is often considered to be the largest and most widespread Sufi order in the world, with many branches spanning from Turkey to Pakistan, one of the largest Sufi branches is effectively founded on Hanbali fiqh. Topic. Revival efforts Since the Al Saad succeeded in annexing Mecca in 1926 and the discovery of oil, Hanbali School of Theology has benefited from the sponsorship of the Saudi state. Theology students from all over the world are educated in Saudi Arabia following this school of theology and Saudi-funded Dawa succeeded in attracting new followers all over the world. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the school has therefore gained more acceptance and diffusion in the Islamic world. Topic: <laughs> List of Hanbali scholars. Abu Dawood, d. 275 AH, famous compiler of Sunan Abu Dawood. Abu Bakr al-Khalil, jurist responsible for the school's early codification. Al Hasan ibn Ali al Babahari, d. 329 AH, an Iraqi traditionist and a jurist, author of the book Shah al Sunnah. Ibn Battar al Uqbari, d. 387 AH, an Iraqi theologian and jurisconsult, author of the book Al Ibana. Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Manda, d. 395 AH, Hadith master, biographer, and historian from Isfahan. Al Qadi Abu Yala, d. 458 AH Ibn Akil D 488 AH Orn ad Din Ibn Habira D 560 AH Abdul Qadir Gilani D 561 AH Abu al Faraj Ibn al Jawzi D 597 AH A famous jurist, exegete, critic, preacher, and a prolific author, with works on nearly all subjects. Hamad al Harani, d. 598 AH, a jurist, critic, and preacher who lived in Alexandria under the reign of Salahuddin. Abd al Ghani al Makdizi, d. 600 AH, a prominent hadith master from Damascus and the nephew of Ibn Qudamah. Ibn Qudamah, d. 620 AH, one of the major Hanbali authorities and the author of the profound and voluminous book on law, Al Mughni, which became popular amongst researchers from all juristic backgrounds. One of two individuals referred to as Sheikh al Islam within the Hanbali school. Dr al Din al Makdizi, d. 643 AH, Ibn Hamdan, Ahmad al Harani, d. 695 AH, a jurist and judge born and raised in Haran and later practiced in Cairo, Tachi al Din ibn Taymiyyah, d. 728 AH, a well-known figure in the Islamic history, known by his friends and foes for his expertise in all Islamic sciences. The second of two people referred to as Sheikh al-Islam within the school. Ibn Mufli al-Makdizi, d. 763 AH. Ibn al-Qayyim, d. 751 AH, the closest companion and a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, also a respected jurist in his own right. Ibn Rajab, d. 795 AH, a prominent jurist, traditionist, ascetic and preacher, who authored several important works, largely commenting upon famous collections of traditions. Al-Bahuti, d. 1051 AH. 
Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab, a leading Hanbali jurist and traditionist, patronym of the Wahhabi movement. Ibn Humayd d. 1295 a Hanbali jurist, traditionist, historian. Abd al-Aziz ibn Baz d. 1419 a former Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia. Ibn al-Uthaymin d. 1421 a.h. a leading jurist, grammarian, linguist, and a popular preacher. Abdullah ibn Jibreen, a leading scholar of Saudi Arabia and was a former member of the Permanent Committee for Islamic Research and Fatawa in Saudi Arabia. Salah al fawzan a well-known scholar in Saudi Arabia and prolific author. He is currently a member of the Permanent Committee. Abdul Rahman al sudais the leading Imam and Khatib of the Grand Mosque Chief of Presidency of Haramain Committee, Saudi Arabia. Saad al Shuraim, the Imam and Khatib of the Grand Mosque Mecca and a professor of Islamic law at Umm al Qura University. See also Islamic schools and branches, Salat, Wudu Adan Islamic views on sin <laughs>